Okay, so far, and I don't know why I started every video with okay, you guys are probably sick of it. So far, <laughs> try to stop doing that. Uh, so far, we when we've used the factor theorem, all of my factors have had a multiplicity of one, meaning there was only one play, you know, there was only one group of that factor. I mean, there wasn't multiple groups of that factor. And so what we're going to talk about now is the multiplicity. If we have multiplicity or zeros that actually show up in our factors more than once. So these would be multiple. And so multiplicity, that's what it means. It means I'm multiplying by the factor more than one time. Has a greater multiplicity than one. And it does affect the shape of the graph. Right? The shape of the graph is affected by the multiplicity. So what I mean by that, suppose my function f of x is the quadratic x plus 2 squared. That means that that function has a 0 at negative 2. But it showed up twice, right? Because that's what the square means. It means x plus 2 is multiplied by itself twice. And so that 0 at negative 2 has a multiplicity of 2 because technically there were two of them. Right? If I write this out, x plus 2 times x plus 2. Now there's only one zero, but there were two factors of that zero. That's what the multiplicity means. I multiplied that zero twice. Right? That's why it was the x plus 2 squared. When we have a zero with a multiplicity of 2, or actually when it has even multiplicity, when it has even multiplicity, Most of ours will be a multiplicity of 2, but 2, 4, 6, you know, however many we want, 8, 9, 10, as long as it's even. So that means I've got, again, multiple of the 0 evenly. What happens graphically is it bounces off. So this particular graph would have a 0 at negative 2, but instead of crossing at negative 2, what happens is it bounces off. This is the shape you graph f of x equals x plus 2 squared, at that 0, it doesn't cross, it bounces off the x-axis when we have even multiple, and that's true for any, so if it was x plus 2 to the 4th, it would be true, x plus 2 to the 10th, it would be true, it would bounce off, it would just touch it there and bounce off, it doesn't cross. All right. If we have odd multiplicities, Right, which a 1 would be an odd multiplicity. So this is an example of two different types of odd multiplicities. 1, it crosses nice and smoothly. Right, that's what a multiple So I've got my function here, x plus 1 cubed and x minus 2 cubed. So I have a 0 at negative 1 and I have a 0 at positive 2. But they have different multiplicities. The negative 1 0 showed up three times. The positive 2 0 showed up one time. Right? If I rewrite this, it's really x plus 1 times x plus 1 times another x plus 1. Right? There are three of those zeros and then just one of the x minus 2. Right? Whenever it's an odd multiplicity, it crosses the x-axis. If it's a 1, it crosses smoothly. If it's higher than 1, what happens is you get like this S shape out. All right, so for this particular graph, what happens is, so I've got my negative 1. So there's my negative 1, 0, and my 2, 0. And so both of them cross. But what happens at 1 is there's a, a kink, what we call an S shape in the graph, right? Because it has a multiplicity of 3. And so what the graph does, it comes up here and it sort of, flattens out near that negative 1, 0. So it comes up, flattens out, has what we call, like I said, an S shape. And then if it's just a simple multiplicity, it crosses without anything weird happening. So it's just a simple cross. And so this is what we mean. S shape means it, it has this shape out. All right, that's what we mean by an S shape. At the 0, it kind of flattens. Right? It kind of flattens out at the 0. This is when it has a multiplicity of... 3, 5, 7, odd multiplicity that's bigger than 1. So odd multiplicity is bigger than 1. It crosses the x-axis, but it has sort of, like I said, a kink in it. Right? So those would be higher degree multiplicities. All right, so to kind of put it all together, 
right, the concept of zeros, x-intercepts, and multiplicity. So this is basically what I just talked about. So if it's odd, that one I did flip it upside down. Well, this would have been the negative version. I wasn't looking at what my a was. focused on the flatting it out then the uh, paying attention to the fact that my a is positive right so it should have been shooting up to positive infinity on both sides so I flip my graph around all right it should have that shape and then the s shape at negative one cuts across it at two so it should match the graph I have here in the notes okay so again if it's an odd multiplicity it crosses the x-axis if it's one it crosses it nice and smoothly. If it's got a higher multiplicity than one, a higher odd multiplicity than one, then it has this sort of S shape. All right, so again, it comes down, there's a kink in it. If we have even multiplicity, it bounces, all right? It, it hits it at that zero, but then bounces off, but it doesn't cross it, it just bounces at that zero. And that would be true if it was a fourth degree, a sixth degree, an eighth degree, a tenth degree. So even degrees bounce, odd degrees cross. If it's an odd degree bigger than one, it has a flattening out S shape at that odd degree bigger than one. All right, so again, has this S shape here. All right, so we're gonna look at these and look at functions and look at their graphs and determine what their multiplicity would be and how that affects the shape of their graph. And we'll do that in the next video.